getting right to it. This one is audio connector and I hope, yes it is, RCA audio and video jacks based on color code. So if I want to use these for video and left-right audio, maybe I'll choose white and red for audio and yellow for video. And these are for the Atari 2600 I just modified with the composite video and RCA audio so that I don't have to use the RF connection to a television anymore. So I don't know where I'm going to put these, but I'll have to drill holes somewhere and I'll be able to just plug this into RCA cables and use it a lot more easily on modern televisions. Up next is electromechanical, which is either a relay or solenoids. And it is solenoids. Looks like I got two of these this time. I've been buying these gradually over the past year. I decided to standardize on a 24 volt coil because I already had some other 24 volt solenoids kicking around. This claims 300 milliamps, but when I power these up, I see 500 or so milliamps. And it's going to make its way into this bin with my other partial collection of solenoids. I have more somewhere else. I'm gradually getting sorted out. Apparently this is a power cable, so I don't want to cut it. And this is the ATX to AT computer power supply adapter I've been waiting for. I'm going to use this on the 286 that I've been getting up and running and putting various expansion cards in, but it uses this kind of power supply cable on the motherboard, but I only have mostly ATX power supplies. I do have one like this, but it's in use in a 486 system. I don't know if I'm going to need to put a load resistor here. For example, the ATX power supply has a 3.3 volt rail. The AT does not use that. So certain power supplies may want a load resistor. I'll have to figure that out as I go. But in the meantime, before I plug this into the motherboard, I'm going to double check the pinouts on both sides of this and make sure everything looks about right. But I'll do a quick test just on the bench. I've been having trouble trying to find a, an ATX power supply that works, but it looks like I used to use this one as a bench supply. So I'm going to try this. And this is a 24 pin with the optional removable part. This is only 20 and I can't plug this in directly unless I break off this panel mount looking clip. So I'm going to take away this extra four pin, make it a 20. And just a quick check here, we have the black and green going to black and green for power on and ground. Now, let's see, we have a fan here so I can see if it does power up. And there it is. It's running. If I turn it off, fan stops, comes back on. I'll clip these together. And I don't want to plug this into a motherboard blindly, so the four center black ones are ground, and the three red ones over here should be plus five, then a minus five, and then on the other side, minus 12, plus 12, five, and some sort of power good. So there's the red wire, five volts. It's hard to hold this and show it. Trying to get to the white wire. There's minus 4.5, I guess that's the minus five. Now I'm looking for the blue minus 12, yellow plus 12, red five. Okay, so the power pins seem to be correct to give this to a 286 motherboard safely. If the tracking has good intel, both of these should be power related. So, yes. And this one. Yes, also what I was hoping. 
These are IEC 320 AC power cord receptacles. So these will take a computer or test equipment power cable and plug in. They fit solid. And these are panel mounts, so there's a place to use screws there. And I can do a project or something that I want to give AC power to. And there's a couple of things I have in mind. One of them ties into these Waco style terminal strips. So if I want to do some temporary AC wiring for some experiments, I can take some of this 14-2 style Romex cable, clip that in. Here's a few more. Now these are all connected together and in common with each other, verified. So now if I'm doing some sort of temporary thing, I can get some AC in a circuit or project and connect it up temporarily where I need and not have to worry about getting wire nuts and putting all these together and taping everything up. I can just quickly get something running. And the other reason I wanted one of these receptacles over 20 years ago, I bought this old style function generator on eBay and it came with a power cord. But something strange has been going on here. So I don't know what kind of receptacle used to be there, but I'd like to try doing something like this. And the last item today comes from Amazon. And this is something I've wanted for a long time, but thanks to channel and Patreon supporters, I finally decided to go ahead and get this. It's a variable auto transformer, or Wikipedia says now we can consider using the Variac name as a genericized trademark. So it's an auto transformer. And one of the main things about an auto transformer to keep in mind when using it is that it doesn't have an isolated primary and secondary. So that needs to be kept in mind when using it for safety reasons. But for my purposes, I'm using it to be able to vary an AC power source to some equipment being tested or evaluated so I can change it from zero or negligible volts AC all the way up to 120. And this can actually go beyond 120 in case I ever needed to do that. So the dial on the top gets turned and there's a brush that moves along the windings of the transformer where the insulation has been removed in a certain spot at the top. So depending where this movable brush is located, it changes the tap point of the transformer and changes the output voltage you get with 120 volts in. The way I want to use this is if I'm working on some older equipment that either is known to be problematic or it's just very old and hasn't been powered on in years, it's good to be able to bring the power up slowly in case there's problems, especially old capacitors in there waiting to explode. So this is good with old vintage tube gear, whether it's test equipment or guitar amplifiers. I'm taking this thing apart to look inside. And I'm not going to go too far. I'm not going to bother taking this off. Other people have done more of a teardown, but I just want to take a look at the wiring on here. Of course, the very first thing I want to do is check grounding. So ground on the plug is grounded to the chassis. And on those two outlets, those are grounded on the front. So this is ground, neutral, and hot. So neutral is closest to this meter. So we have ground, then hot, and then neutral. And on the plug, this one's neutral. So, so blue is neutral. And this coming to the switch has a black wire coming over to where neutral is on these receptacles. And hot should then be the brown wire. So that's coming to the fuse. And then there's a red wire over to the switch. So at least the hot is fused. That's good. 
and then there's just the wiring going into the transformer and coming back out to the receptacles to vary the AC. Aside from that, hmm, we have hot glue acting as a strain relief on this AC power cable. At least, hmm, it's rocking around. I may want to do something there. But what I don't like, I don't know if it's going to show up clear enough on here, the soldering everywhere just looks bad. Like, it looks like they're all blobbed on, like an afterthought. Actually, I see a strand of wire hanging down right here in underneath. I don't want that to come over and shore it out. Like, here it looks like they put the black one on, on the bottom, and then they reheated it and dabbed this blue wire on, and it has this extra ball of solder sitting on top. Some of them look flaky or crusty. It even looks like there's green corrosion on these terminals here. I may want to just reflow all of this, add fresh solder, and I don't know, like, do these tabs on all of these terminals have holes that you're actually better off putting the wires through? But for now, at least it looks like it should be safe enough to plug in. And right now it is down at zero volts. So there's the tap that goes along the transformer windings. So I'm going to put this back together, hope it doesn't break, and test it out. I have an AC voltmeter here so I can check. In the wall, I'm getting around 122 to 123 volts AC. So right now I have a power bar plugged in and the meter's in that, as well as this dimmable LED lamp plugged in. And in the top outlet on here, I have one of those testers to make sure AC, hot, ground, and neutral are connected properly. So the neon bulbs in here are not even going to come on until we're closer to the 120 volts. But I'm going to turn this on. It's at zero now. So it's 600 millivolts. And as I adjust it, so I'm at 4.8 volts, just barely turning it on. 11 volts and the LED is starting to get bright. 22 volts. Now I'm at 50 volts. And when I look at the voltmeter here, it's around 50 as well. And I just got to 87 and a half volts and I can sort of see the tester lights starting to dimly glow. So I'm just going to keep going toward 120. I'll put it at 122 to 123, which is one to one with what's coming in. Now if I look down at this voltmeter, it's just past 110. But I don't even know what the scale is, so I don't know if it shows 120. Now that I don't need this dimmable lamp, I'm just going to turn it off. And now the lights on this tester indicate ground, hot, and neutral are wired correctly on the receptacles. So I can take that out as well, because I don't want to exceed 120 volts. Now I'll just turn this up all the way. There's no load on it, except the meter. And I'm getting 146 volts, no load. And it's hard to get the camera angle, but we're somewhere before 150 volts on this needle. So as just a glance, I guess that's an okay meter. Let's say I go to 100 on the voltmeter. And yeah, we're now before 110 on here. So I'll have to try it under load with something plugged in later and see how it really works. But for now, at least it functions. So that's an interesting array of parts. A little bit more heavy duty on the power side than I usually buy. But every couple of years at least, I like to be able to upgrade some test equipment, whether it's replacing an obsolete scope like I did two years ago with this Siglent, or getting something I never had before and could put to use like this auto transformer or Variac.